Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be installing a Hobie twist and seal 8 inch hatch in the rear tank well of my Hobie Outback. And we're going to go through this install together. Stick around. Welcome to J West Fishing. Hey, man, I love this. There's a couple things to be concerned about during this install. The first one is getting that hole cut straight. The next one is your rudder line, which runs right about here. You have to be very careful not to cut that when you're cutting this hole for the eight inch twisted seal hatch. You're gonna to wanna to take your rudder line and release it. Make sure that rudder drops down all the way. Now that I've dropped the rudder, I wanna make sure that this line is really loose. Hobie instructions say to remove this entire thing, but I'm gonna take a chance, I'm gonna risk it, and I'm gonna prop it up like this. To hold the rudder up, I've used a piece of clear masking tape. I really wanna make sure that that cable's loose, so I reach underneath here and make sure it's nice and loose so that it lays on the bottom of the hull. All right, I've got the rudder up, I've got it taped, I've got the line loose, now I've gotta remove this marine mat and it should just peel up. Oh, this is some good stuff. My goodness, that was really on there. You probably don't need to do this, but I'm gonna take a plastic razor blade and get some of this glue off. Okay, let's take this hatch out. Comes with a small bag of screws. Installation instructions. So this ring is a little different. All the other ones I've seen have a split in them so that you can actually get it in the hole. We'll have to figure that out. Got a gasket and the hatch itself. Okay, so this one isn't split like all the others. So I think what I'm gonna do is compress it. I tried to fit it in through the front hatch. It won't go through the back, so it has to be compressed and slid inside the hole. We'll see how that goes. I'm gonna lay this bracket in here and try to center it as best as possible. I'm gonna mark a line on the inside. Now that I have it marked, I'm gonna drill a hole near the edge of the line so I can get in there and cut it. I happen to have one of these air saws, so I'm gonna use this. The blade's a little too long. I'm sure they're shorter blades, but I don't have any, so I'm gonna cut this because I'm a little concerned about cutting that rudder line. Just like that, I'm gonna to wanna to trim just to the outside edge of that blue line. Catastrophic failure of the air saw, unfortunately. It got stuck, it's just not working right, so I'm doing it by hand. Well, that was a whole lot harder than it had to be. But I got it out, I'm gonna save this piece just in case I need to do any welding in the future. I'm gonna clean up this hole, vacuum my mess, and do a test fit. As you can see, the rudder line was nowhere near where I was cutting, so I took too many precautions, I was a little too careful. It cost me some extra labor, but that's okay. The hole's cut, the hatch fits, so let's install this thing. So like I was saying, this ring is totally different than all the other rings I've seen, but I think it'll just squeeze in, just like that. 
So no problem whatsoever. We've got some stainless steel screws that the kit comes with. Okay, I've got the first screw through. I'm gonna line it up with the backing ring. And that's in there pretty good. Now that we have it lined up, we should just be able to screw these directly in. Putting a lot of force because I'm not pre-drilling them. I'm gonna go ahead and take the tape off and pull that rudder back up so I can adjust the line. There we have it guys, the eight inch twist and seal hatch installed. In my next video, I'm gonna be using Nakwa batteries, a Hobie battery holder. I'm gonna install a complete power system fish finder, everything. So make sure you subscribe. Use the links down in the description. And until next time, tight lines. I hope to see you out on the water.